Hi guys, what's up? It's Rayvon from Love Lola and welcome to my channel. So today we're going to be doing a quick little video. Um, it's just kind of a way to add a little funk to a pattern that you're doing. Um, I love it because it's a great scrap buster if you have little pieces of fabric that if you're like me, you're not throwing it away. It doesn't matter that it's this big or that big and you have nothing else that, and that's all you have left of that. You're not throwing it away, right? We, we just don't do that. So this is a great little project that you can do for those little pieces of fabric, little pieces of leather, whatever you have laying around. Um, I say it's a scrap buster, but it doesn't have to be. Like, for example, for today, I am going to be making a huge panel of it just because I have some projects coming up and I have some ideas in my head that I want to use it for but I'm not sure what I'm going to use it for exactly so I'm just going to make a lot of it and have it there and available for when I get ready to cut okay, it. So for when I do these stripes I have I usually do two and a half inches that's my set that I'm going to do because that for a medium sized bag that can give me um, three or more colors. and it just winds up being about the right size but you can adjust it I have adjusted it so just for to show for example this panel I did all of these pieces um, two and a half inches wide they're all two and a half inches wide each one for another bag that I just finished for this bag this pink piece I decided I wanted to do it uh, two and a half inches but I, I wanted my green, I wanted the pink to be the highlight since a lot of this other stuff is pink. So I wanted it to be a little bit bigger. So I did two and a half inches on the pink and then I did um, two inches on the green. And then for the black, I believe I did one and a quarter inch or maybe one and a half inch because you have to take into consideration that when you sew these stripes together, you're going to be using up about um, about half an inch for a seam allowance because you want to leave a seam allowance long enough on the back to bend it open and then do that top stitch on it. So if you want a two inch wide piece of fabric, then you're going to have to cut that piece two and a half inches. And if you want one inch, cut it one and a half and so forth. So, um, so yeah, you don't have to do, you can do them all one size you know that works great or if you want to play around with it you can change the the sizes up it's just whatever whatever you're in the mood for that's what's so cool about it like do what you want to do um i usually do them at an angle like this so if you're doing them at an angle you're going to have to make the piece longer than what you would think because you're turning it at an angle so um I hope that makes sense. So if this piece is, let's say this piece is 12 inches long, this piece right here, it needs to be more than 12 inches because you're going at a diagonal. So um, you would have to do maybe 15 or 16 inches. So just play around with it. The first time you do it, I say just do a little bit longer strip than you would normally do just to get a feel of it. When I do something like this, I usually do um, 16 inches of all of the pieces because I like to have a little bit left over to make a matching little essential wallet to go with it but if you don't want to have any extra pieces I've <laughs> I've got it down I've got it down to an art like I know that I can do 16 inches here 15 here I think I do 12 here and six on the outside so um yeah, if you want to get exactly with it, then go ahead and do that. But I suggest in the beginning, just make it all a little bit longer until you figure out, you know, what you're, you know, what you're doing. Because that would suck to do all of that work. And then when you go to cut out your pattern, you don't have enough. I would flip a table. Like, <laughs> so just take your time. Use a little bit more fabric than you normally would. So, um, yeah, so we're going to go over how to do this and then I'm going to go ahead and continue to record how to do a simple clutch because I made a clutch. And I've been getting a lot of people ask me for the pattern for it and I've been working on it, but the, the reason it took so long is because the way that I made that, um, that clutch, you would have to have an industrial uh, sewing machine to make it if you're using vinyl or leather and a lot of people don't have 
an industrial machine. So I was like, I don't want to put out a pattern that only works on a domestic. So I had recorded a video on everything and my phone sucks when it comes to storage. I can only do like one video at a time. So I had to go and delete <laughs> the videos that I had recorded doing the clutch the other way so that I can make room to do the clutch. I came up with a different way to do it so that um, it can be made on a domestic machine as well as an industrial. So I will be showing you guys how to make simple clutch like this. This is the way to make it on an industrial. It's really simple. It's just one panel that you make and turn it out and then fold it. But it just gets um, super thick. <laughs> I've got $100 for anybody who can tell me why I was tapping the purse to try to make the video focus. You know, like, like you tap your phone to get the focus. It's just not domestic friendly. As usual, you can find a link to the pattern down below in the description box. I'll also have, um, you know, where I got my materials, where you can get those materials. Um, there's timestamps for you guys. And I think that's about it. So let's get started. Y'all like my hair? You know, I just braided it last week. I love it. I love not having to mess around with my hair too much, so braids it is. All right, here we go. Okay, so today, like I said, I'm gonna be doing um, a larger piece, so I'm gonna cut these by 24 inches. So to cut these, you can do what, whatever way is your preference. You know, um, if you want to use a ruler to, you know, mark your lines and draw it and then go back and cut it, you can do that, that's fine. I am going to be using my, what is this, uh, rotary cutter? I'm gonna be using this and I have a 24 inch ruler. Make sure that you take your time when you cut these because you want them to be as straight as possible because if it's not, you know, you may start having wonky, what was my thing? Your panels can start to be wonky if everything isn't, I don't know, cut and sewn correctly. You know what I mean, right? So just because you're going to be lining up the pieces on the edge to sew. So if your pieces on the edge aren't exactly straight, you're going to start getting these funky waves and stuff, and we don't want that. So just make sure you take your time and do it right. Do it right. Don't rush. You'll regret it later. Trust me. If anybody knows, I know. And the board that I'm going to be using is my 36 by 36 board. Pretty nice size. I love it for doing stuff like this. All right, let's go. Hey, Google, play Tanasha on Pandora. Sure, play Tanasha on Pandora. So I'm going to be, hey, Google, pause music. Okay, and so for my cuts today, I'm going to be doing them all two and a half inches. Hey Google, play Tanasha on Pandora. Hey guys, really quick, I have to talk about this vinyl that I'm gonna be using today. I love it so much. I bought it a couple of months ago and I've just been eyeing it Every now and then when I walk by, I'll just rub it because it's so soft. I love it so much. It is this vinyl that I found. It is a brand I have never used before. It's called Ulta Fabrics. Y'all, when I tell you how good this vinyl feels, it feels so good, the texture it's so soft it feels like leather it feels like leather and i know once i put my interface in on it and stabilizer ain't you gonna be able to tell me it's not leather baby that's just what it is that's 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 just it you know i just love it like 
I've, I haven't used it yet, so I can't speak on how it's going to sell, but judging off of how it feels right now, I know it's going to sell great. Oh my gosh. I love it. Especially this one. This one is just giving me all of the feels that I need. I want to make everything with it and I haven't had time to use them, but I'm so excited. But anyway, I had to, I had to give a shout out to these ultra fabrics. They are nice. I don't know where to look in the camera. Should I look in the middle? Should I look over there? Should I look, should I look to my left? Should I look to my left? Is that looking at the camera? Boop. She's just dancing again. Oh, oh, look, she got a microphone. <laughs> okay, guys, let's talk about interfacing. So, so important. I wish I had learned that earlier on in my sewing career. You got to interface your shit, okay? That's it, period. All right, so today I am going to be using the heavy interfacing from Emmeline Bags. You can use that, you can use SF101 if you have it, um, Decaville Light, any of these things work. But what I wanna talk about is when to add the interfacing. Now, in the past, I have done it this way that I'm about to explain to you, but now I tend to do it the other way. Before you start cutting your strips, if you wanted to grab a piece of, let's say, Obviously, I'm not using this leather, but if you wanted to if cut, say, estimate a 16 by 16 or a 12 by 12 piece of your material and then immediately interface it and then go and cut your strips, you can do that. I actually did that in the beginning. Things to consider if you do it that way. When you sew your strips together and then you lay them open, you now are gonna be working with a little bit thicker material because everything is going to be interfaced. So you have to consider that, you know, for your machine, do you want these thicker seams? Um, that's the con. The pro of doing it that way is it helps eliminate the warping that could possibly happen when you're sewing these strips together because depending on the, the vinyl or the leather or the, the fabric, the cotton that you're using, um, if you're not doing your cuts and your seams, you know, perfectly straight, there is a possibility if after you've added strip after strip after strip that it can have a little bit of warping. So that's, um, that's a pro of interfacing before you cut it. The con is that, you know, or if you're like me, I never know exactly how much I'm going to be cutting. I just kind of do things as I go. So you could be wasting your interfacing or you could be wasting your time. That's the main thing here, okay? So I did do it that way, but I'm not gonna lie. I did that once or twice, and now I never interface before I cut. Now I go ahead and cut my strips. I sew them together, and then after I have them sewn together and cut into the pattern that I want it to be, then I go and add my one piece of interfacing and get it on there. And usually if there is a little bit of wonkiness going on, when you add that interface into it, it's gonna eliminate that problem. So this is the faster, more practical way to do it, in my opinion. All right, so we got that out of the way. Now is the fun part. I love just lining these up and coming up with the design that I want. So let's have a look at what we're working with. Whoopsie. Sorry. Let's see. Okay, so here is the fun part for me. Figuring out how you want to, you know, the order that you want to do your stripes. Sometimes I like to pick one. Sometimes I like to pick a color and let it be the focal. And then I will, you know, go out from there. As you can see in this example. Other times I like to go in a certain order and just repeat that again so right here i would do another brown this color and so forth so you know just figure out you know figure out what you're making and the look that you want to go for do you have something you want to be a big focal or do you want to just have this be a continuous pattern 
for today, I think I am going to go ahead and just do it in this order. I like the way that looks, the way this dark brown transitions up to this light um, color. So that's what I'm going to do today. You figure out what you want to do and let's get it together and then we'll get sewing. Okay, so I've decided I'm going to do this order. So all I'm going to do is grab my first two pieces, which is going to be these two. And I'm going to lay them right sides together and line up the top edge. And then I'm just going to pin it all the way down. And if you want to save time, you can go ahead and add your next piece. Like this is brown, so I know that my next piece is going to be this. You can just add it right sides together and get those clamped as well so that you can have it all going i like to do one at a time so and for clarification for this video i'm going to go ahead and do one at a time okay before we start sewing let's talk about thread <sighs> this project can be as easy <laughs> and fast as you decide to make it and thread is one of the things that is going to determine that when i first made this bag cutting these pieces together, I decided that I wanted my thread to match each piece of material. So I was, when it was time to do the top stitching, I was switching to brown thread when I was on the brown piece. I was switching to be beige when I was on this piece. I was switching to yellow, orange, and so forth. And yeah, it looked great, but it took a lot of time and I ain't got it. So you decide what you want to do. Um, if I would have continued to do that, I would have had to raise my price on this bag on my website. And I didn't want to raise the price. I wanted it to be something that I feel like is pretty affordable. So I just, I don't feel like the thread made enough of a difference to where that's necessary. I don't know if you can see on this. I didn't do that. Now I just use the same color thread and I think that it looks great with just the one color thread. I think it kind of pulls everything together. So um, this is... These are the colors that we are working with today. I am working with. <laughs> you can do the same thing. And, you know, yeah, I feel like this would also be a great uh, neutral color. See? I don't know if you can see that. On top of all of these, I love the way that it blends. So that's an option. Um, this is what I was going to go with because I also like the way that that looks. Yeah, so just play around with your thread and, you know, figure out what you think is the best option for you. But I really don't think it's necessary to change it out every time. I don't think it makes that much of a difference. But, yo, baby, do you. All right. All right, so on my industrial, I feel like I have to make my stitch length a little bit longer. So I'm going to be sewing this when I connect them together at about a stitch length of four. And when I turn it over to top stitch, I'm going to be using a stitch length of about four and a half. If I was on my domestic, when I used to sew these together, I used to use a stitch length of two and a half or three while on the back. And when I would flip it over, I would use a stitch length of like three and a half to four. I think I used a four. Um, yeah. All right, let's get started. And I'm sewing this at one fourth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, quick note, if you're using fabric that has a little bit of stretch to it, it can start to kind of um, lift up. And do you see right there where it's starting to lift up? If you keep letting that go, it's eventually going to warp it where, you know, it may wind up being a little bit to the side like that, and we don't want that. So as I'm going, I am just taking out the clamp the clamp, clamps that I have there and repositioning them so that that won't be an issue. So you're going to take the piece that you just sewed and you're going to push it open. Isn't that so pretty that texture? Gotta love it. Okay, so we're here. Let's talk about top stitching. This is where your design also comes into play. You can top stitch along both sides if you like or you can just choose one side to top stitch for example on this piece 
I wanted this yellow to stand out, so what I did was folded my seam allowance away from it on both sides and did my seam allowance on that fabric, leaving this just open and smooth because that's just the way I, envis I envisioned it. Then moving on from there, I continue to only leave a to only put a seam allowance on one side. That was just what I felt like doing. <laughs> um, and you'll see on this side of the yellow, my seam allowance is going to be on the right side of the fabric that's joined together. And on this side, my seam allowance is going to be on the left side. Does that make sense? Because I wanted everything to match. I wanted everything to be even. So this one is going to have, these tan colors are going to have that seam allowance on it but no seam allowance on the other side. And then the brown next to it is going to have a seam allowance on the inside and no seam allowance next to it. And then the orange is going to have a seam allowance on the inside and so forth. That's just how I wanted to do it. But you can do it however you like. I've done some where I put a seam allowance on both sides because I didn't want anything to be a focal pointer because that's just what I did that day. <laughs> you know, just, you just got to feel it. Okay. So today. I feel like I am going to... So I think I'm going to just put my seam on the left side and do that for each one that I add together. And if it's not making sense right now, as I do it, you, it'll start to make sense. So what I do is I put all of my seam allowance towards the side that I'm going to put it on. So I'm going to be putting all of my seam allowance on the brown side. fabric and push it towards the side that you want the seam allowance to be on. And then go back and top stitch at one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Make sure, make sure that you are back stitching at the beginning and the end of these stitches, okay? Okay, now as you can see, there is a little bit of that wonkiness that I talked about earlier going on. Um, it's not too much that I'm worried about. I'm not wor really worried about it. Um, by the time I put the interface in on, I think it'd be okay. But this vinyl does have a little bit of stretch to it. So what I'm going to do is when I go back to my machine, I'll just loosen my tension a little bit on the thread so that it doesn't pull it as tight. And that should fix that problem. Okay, so what we would do now is just grab our next piece. And now you're going to take it, depending on which side you want to add it to, I'm going to be going from darker to lighter, so I'm going to be adding it to this side. And I'm just going to lay it right side together and pin it again. All right, and now we're going to go back to the machine, and we're going to do the same thing as before. We're going to sew this at one-fourth of an inch uh, seam allowance. Another thing that you want to consider when you are um, deciding which way you want your which way you want to fold your seam allowance is the texture of the vinyls that you're using if you're mixing different textures. For example, like I said, this one is a buttery soft vinyl. You can see it, it bends really easily. It has a little bit of an elastic feel to it. It has a little bit of a pull to it. This one is a lot thicker. This is a thicker. So whenever I go to fold that seam, it naturally wants the seam allowance to go that way because this is, doesn't want to bend, see? It's, that's just what it wants to do and uh, I don't like to fight it too much you know I don't want to be fighting it and making it go this way and now it's got a weird groove see if I try to put it this way I can do it but it's like do I want to do it do I want to go through that trouble so that's something to consider when you're doing this as well your seam allowance all right I really want to leave it open, honestly, guys. I like the way that looks with no seam. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure that out. Okay, um, so in the meantime, at this point, we would go and top stitch again. Whether you wanted to do, you know, a top, you wanted to open this up and do a top stitch on each side, or if you want to continue with the flow, and if that was the case, my top stitch would go on this lighter color because 
when these two joined, my top stitch went below um, the bottom of the seam. So I would continue to put it on the bottom if you wanted to do that. So just do whatever you want to do. And then once you get that next top stitch on, I'm not going to top stitch mine because I think I'm going to play around and figure out how to do this without a top stitch. Um, but I would go ahead and add my next piece, which is going to be this one. So same as before, we're just going to lay these pieces right side together and pin it. All right, and guess what we're going to do now? <laughs> yeah, we're going to fold that open. And we are going to go and add a top stitch. Oh, I love these colors together. That's so pretty, right? Okay, so now go ahead and add your top stitch. Again, I'm not going to be adding a top stitch. Let's pretend that we just added this top stitch and then we're gonna just start over. So I'm gonna go and add this black. I mean, I'm gonna go and add this dark brown because I'm just gonna be starting over, over and over and over. So I'm gonna lay this right sides together, always right, side, right sides together, and pin it. Oh, the music got me, dance break. Let's take a break because I have to vent. Okay, so as we get older, I have found that I have to do a little bit more to take care of myself. So I have all of these supplements and vitamins that I take every day um, because I need to. Well, I don't, I don't typically eat breakfast. I get up, I drink a cup of coffee, and then I just down water all day while I'm working. And I usually don't get hungry until around four, you know, so that's when I'll eat my first meal of the day is four and then I'll eat like a little dinner later. But um, because most of my supplements have to be taken with food. A lot of times I forget to take it because come four or five o'clock when I'm eating, I'm rushing, you know, I'm dealing with my daughter or I'm, you know, finishing an order or whatever and I will wind up forgetting to take my vitamins. So I'm trying to do a better job of that and I decided to eat a little something in the morning so that I can go ahead and take my vitamins when I wake up at seven o'clock and get it out of the way. So I did that this morning and I ate, um, I made an English muffin, me and my daughter split it. Come like one o'clock, I am starving. My stomach is growling. Like I'm in, what is going on? How, how come when I don't eat anything, and I know they say it's not good not to eat, you need to eat the food, keep your metabolism going. Okay, that's cool, whatever. But now I'm hella hungry and I want like, I don't want a snack, I want a meal. And I don't have time to be stopping at one o'clock and making a meal and stuff. So I'm agitated because I want to finish this tutorial and I feel like I can't, I feel like I have to go eat and I don't have time. So what is up with that? It's like when you eat, it makes you more hungry. That's annoying. Okay guys, so this is where we're at. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love these colors. That's gonna be nice, whatever I make with this. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna put this to the side because this is for a different project. Another day, another day. So I went ahead, I had this already from when I made it a long time ago. And I went ahead and just made another panel really quick just for the sake of this video. So I just finished doing this with the top stitching and everything. So what I'm gonna do now, actually let's do this piece. All right, so I'm going, I decided for this one I wanted it to be at an angle. So if you were deciding that you want your stripes to be at an angle, what I like to do is try to make my points match. So my opposite um, points. <laughs> I would start it on the yellow corner because that's my focal and then go at a straight diagonal and I would make that corner also start in the yellow. Okay. That way, this main piece that I want to be my focal point will be going right down the center. And I like to use 16 inches because then I always know that that's going to leave me enough room 
to make one of my essential wallets that I like to add to all of my orders. So these are 16 inches. So what I would do at this point is place my pattern there and just trace around it. But I am going to be doing it with this one first. All right, so I'm gonna place this. I'm gonna have my corner on the yellow because the yellow is my focal and my other corner on the yellow as well. That's my focal point and there we go. That's where I want it to be. Great. Then I'm gonna trace around it. With my new marker that I love. And this is my pattern from my clutch. I'm using this today because it's a really simple pattern and I want to use something really simple, you know, while we're learning how to do these stripes for the first time. I'll have a link down below if you're interested in getting it. Okay, once we have this drawn out, what I'm going to do is go over to my machine and I'm going to go in about one eighth of an inch to, no, I'm gonna go in about a quarter inch and I'm going to just sew on the inside of that pattern outline that I just drew. And the reason we wanna do that is because if you cut, if you right now were to cut right where your pattern is, there's a likelihood that those threads that are on the corners are gonna to start to unravel and we don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna sew inside of these lines and I'm gonna use a small stitch length because I wanna to try to catch these threads. So um, if I was on my normal machine, a domestic, I would probably do, um, a two, uh, 1.7 or a two on my machine. Um, this, um, on my industrial, I'm going to do it at probably about a three. Okay. And if you look closely, what I did was I just wadded, wadded. I just made my stitch length really long as I based it around any part that's just normal. And as I got closer to wherever there was going to be a, um, top stitching where I'm gonna cut, I just did my stitching really tiny because what you don't want to happen is that to come apart once you cut it, you don't want those problems. So just, you know, make sure that you're, you stitch pretty small over the areas where you're gonna be making a cut. All right. I was thinking I wanted it to go across like this. I think that'd be pretty dope to have that contrast of diagonal and then across. But then I would start thinking maybe I should try to fussy cut it so that it lines up. That'd be cool too, right? I just changed my mind on this, of course, so I'm going to show you again. So I just decided that I want to use this piece for my flap instead. Like I said before, I'm going to use a wider stitch as I'm in the normal area, but when I get close to where my top stitching ends, I'm going to make my stitch length a little bit smaller just to try to ensure that these threads don't start unraveling when we start cutting it. All right, now. So today we're gonna to be doing a clutch. You don't have to add the flap. I, it's just an option for you. I'm going to be showing this option, but you can omit it if you just want a simple clutch. Whatever you're in the mood for. So that's going to be my flap. I'm going to go ahead and cut my main panel piece. Okay, so now that I've got my panels cut out, my patterns, what I'm going to do is go ahead and do my interfacing. Today, I'm going to be using Emmeline Heavy. So I'm just going to grab that. Trace it really quick. That's why you shouldn't use pins. I grabbed that because it was sitting there. 
But that's not right. I know that. I know better than that. <sighs> so stupid. Don't rush and be like me. Here's my safe disappearing ink marker that I was that I should have used. If you like, you can cut your interfacing to be slightly shorter than your pattern piece if you want to keep that out of your seams. I don't really care too much because my machine will sew through it all, but you can cut that slightly smaller. Um, my flat piece has already been interfaced because I had this laying around, so I don't need to do you that. You can go ahead and get your stabilizer pieces cut out. I'm using Pellon Peltex 70. You can cut those pieces out and just put it to the side. All right, and now I am going to go ahead and get this interfaced. Just follow whatever your directions are for the interfacing that you're using. All right, guys, so we are going to pause right there because it is two o'clock in the morning and I have to be up at 6.30. <laughs> So we're gonna take a break, sorry about that. I just don't have enough time in the day, I swear, but I'm trying to get this video done. It's recorded, I just have to um, finish the editing and then I have to um, finish typing up the pattern um, so that it can be ready to be downloaded. So thank you for watching so far. I'm gonna take a break and um, I will get the rest of this posted up for you guys tomorrow, okay? All right, thanks. Bye. Here is what the finished clutch is going to look like. It has a snap closure, um, and it also has a zipper closure, and there's going to be some cord slots inside.